Hello and welcome to Show of the Weekend, where this week we'll be reviewing the finest Splatoon 2 Plaza artwork in our public gallery. Ellen, are you excited to get going? Then let's begin. This marvellous piece gets right to the heart of the Squid Kid dilemma. Sneeze highlights social divisions through use of harsh edges and stark contrast. Would you agree, Ellen? Splendid. And what about this piece? Faf presents us with a portrait of Splatoon 2's hosts, Pearl and Marina, one that invites us to turn our heads and in doing so achieve a fresh perspective on not only the drawing, but on the wider world around us. Really something, isn't it? Splatoon 2 player Boo's work implores us to observe the game's etiquette, and in this the piece becomes a mirror, through which we are compelled to examine our own behaviours and indeed attitudes, a powerful and understated composition. Battlecat TM doesn't shy from controversy or confronting contemporary issues with this sketch, striking at the heart of ketchup versus mayonnaise, the theme of this weekend's Splatfest. Ellen, do you prefer ketchup or mayonnaise? <laughs> quite. Next we turn uh, Guys, not that whatever this is isn't good, but this isn't going to be the whole show, right? Andy, you've interrupted Ellen's artistic flow. What is going on? Ow. Show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend. I'm sorry that the art got broken up, Ellen. I know you were enjoying it. You know, just, I like releasing my creativity. You do. And you famously do. I just don't want to, you know, have that stifled. Why don't we move on to something more pleasant? Yes. Um, there's a game that we've both played. <gasps> there is. It features a certain man with a little hat. <laughs> you need mm. to be more specific, Luke. Oh, right, you know, I'm talking about Mario <gasps> and his friends, the rabbits. Yay! <laughs> It's cool, right? I really like it. It's funny because I'm someone that's not really a huge fan of turn-based combat. But with this, it just felt really fun. And especially with it being on the Switch, I think it is really good to have that type of gameplay on the move. Where yes. you don't have to be kind of like on it all the time. You can go, okay, right, give me five minutes. I need to go do something else and then come back and carry on. The Peach Rabbit. I love her so much. <laughs> I love I'm just like, she's great. <laughs> um, and uh, when Andy and I were playing it, it seemed like the characters, like the Mario characters, yeah. were, were, were like sort of better. Yeah. Is that fair to say, Andy? Did you Significantly say? better. Significantly better, yeah. <laughs> we started out with a team that had like the Mario rabbit in it and the yeah. Luigi rabbit and the Peach rabbit. And then we were like, what if it was just Mario, Peach and Luigi? Oh. The thing is, like the game is so crazy deep. There's such an insane number yeah. of weapons and items in it and stuff that I would be surprised if they hadn't managed to balance it so yeah. that the rabbits were equally good. I don't know if it's just me, but I felt a lot less bad about sacrificing rabbit versions of characters. Like if yeah. someone had, to, had yeah. to go, and I'd be like, right, rabbit Luigi, you're off. And nerf Luigi, Ubisoft, because he is like <laughs> un... Or rather, don't nerf him, make him more powerful, because like you do not need anyone else on your team. He is just a one-man, cold-killing machine army. He's just sniping. He's like... Like, like Luigi <laughs> in the clock tower from four miles away, ad adjusting for the Coriolis effect. And Luigi's like, confirm kill, moving on. And he's like taking his sniper rifle apart, putting it in the box. This is exactly the kind of thing that I think Nintendo wanted to not happen. Wanted people to not be talking about. He feels nothing. He feels nothing. Not anymore. The first hundred, sure. Not anymore. I played a lot of XCOM Enemy Unknown. Yeah. And th this fits so exactly into the mold of it. A lot of the gameplay elements carry over as well. Mm -hmm. Particularly the, it's called the Overwatch, confusingly, not like mm. Overwatch. If an enemy runs into in their field of, of view, yeah, and it's normally Luigi because he's got yeah. this insane range on him. <laughs> so you have like a rabbit like darting out from cover and Luigi's just like, <laughs> <laughs> or like shooting them out of the sky. <laughs> Chalks another line on the line. <laughs> He's the angel of death. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have so much new respect for Luigi. Like, fans of this show will know that I'm not the biggest Luigi fan. When I played it, you were being very, very mean to rabid Luigi. Don't dance, Luigi. Peach can dance. Mario can dance. Shame on the unit. Rabid Luigi, I'm sticking with it. Oh. Shame on the unit. <laughs> Luigi, he's not even in the unit. He's like, he is the, he unit. Is the unit. Luigi, you absolute unit. <laughs> You're in the unit or something and you'd be like, man, we're really like pinned down here or something like Captain, get on the radio. I'd be like, just called HQ. And then you'd just see like a helicopter in the distance and like a little parachute. And then a few minutes later, shots ring out. Um, really fun. But it's really good family fun. It is though. Like, no, no, it really, it really we're is. We're joking really is. about like, yeah. Luigi and stuff. But it is, it's really accessible and it's something that I think is needed on the Switch um, yeah. because, you know, it will encourage people to try something different as well because it is a Mario game. I often find that, you know, some people found out that, oh, I like a certain type of RPG because of Paper Mario and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, Mario is the, the gateway into like other types of games as well as platforming because yeah. it is such an accessible franchise. It could be a promising sign for the Switch thinking about next year. There's no no question that it's been like an incredible opening oh, oh, for yeah. the Switch. Breath of the Wild, yeah. uh, Splatoon 2. Yeah. There's a whole other show of the weekend where I just talk about Splatoon yeah. 2 for about 50 to 60 minutes. <laughs> uh, Mario Odyssey yeah. uh, coming up later in the year. Mm -hmm. I feel like Mario Rabbids is a very, very promising looking mm -hmm. third party game yeah. of the kind that we will need a lot more of yeah. in 2018. Yeah, so when Andy and I were playing Mario yeah. Rabbids, they sort of jumped us quite far forward in the game and quickly the difficulty really ramped up. Again, it reminded me very much of XCOM in the way that you can tell in the first 10 minutes, like, it's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> is not going my way. It's a hard game, but I, th I, I do think that's good. Remembering my childhood, like a game being really, really difficult wasn't yeah. a problem or didn't necessarily put me off. Like it meant that I no. could never finish it. Yeah. When you're a kid, you assume that that's your fault. Yeah, no, that's, you do. Yeah. You do think, oh, I'm just you just like, oh, I guess I just am a garbage person <laughs> who can't do anything. <laughs> Okay, so, you're not a garbage person, you're very nice. Where were you <laughs> when I was failing to complete Lion King? <laughs> Complete Lion King, you are a garbage person. I'm sorry. What? That, no. No, that was one of the hardest easy. platformers. No, it was easy. I did it first time. He knows, I can do this. He knows how to hurt me. <laughs> Rented it, completed it. <laughs> Gave it back to Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> he used to put on hourly shows on how to complete Lion King. So I, I think that the challenge that is there mm -hmm. in Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, are we okay calling it that? Mario plus Rabbids, Mario and Rabbids, Mario Rabbids, what are we I think calling it's, it? I think it's plus because it is a There's plus, a plus in the title um, but it feels like it needs an equal it feels like an unbalanced equation mario plus rabbids equals, equals what kingdom battle. <laughs> equals, good equals a, a rollicking good <laughs> dose of family fun uh, yeah, until I'm... luigi shows up <laughs>
Um, I like Sniper Luigi. <laughs> I like Sniper Luigi. I like the challenge. I like it because it's it's the mixture of the combat and puzzle. Really, it's like a yeah. lot of calculation. Yeah. Um, and a bit more fun than certain turn-based battle games for me. Sure. That person. Luke, mm -hmm. I think we're going to stop talking about some rabbits. Okay. And instead, start talking about dinosaurs, which I know you like. I love them. Because love them coming so out much. soon is Ark Survival Evolved. So, after a very long time in early access mm -hmm. on various platforms, yep. Ark Survival Evolved is having a full release this month. Cool. I've not played it. It's been something that I've, I've oh. wanted to play for a long time oh, because it's dinosaurs. Great. It's good. I played uh, on Xbox One. They had a thing where you could play for an hour for free just oh, to yeah. try it out. And it was really good. Uh, you don't get very far in an hour. It's uh, something that sure. you really have to invest in to build up your character. But, but neither is, did the dinosaurs. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it took millions of years. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, Luke, I've got some questions yeah. regarding Ark Survival of Old and cool. this like, sci fi dinosaur animal Paradise. survival island thing. So, Luke, okay. yeah. question one. Yeah. Ark Survival Evolved is set in a sci fi world filled with lots of now extinct animals. Mm -hmm. Luke, if you could bring one long extinct animal back, which would it be? Uh, so is it just like, is it a species? Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Is it, um, <laughs> you said. Yeah. yeah. Is it a species or just one individual? A species. Okay. Like, not going to be like one rare bird oh, that yeah, will sure, sure. just die and be extinct again. Well, so you could you bring know. back that species into the world okay. so you can see it again. Okay, okay. I definitely wanted to be a dinosaur. Okay, so we, we are sticking because there's yeah. lots of mammals, a lot birds of, and oh, things that you mammals. might know of. Mammals. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, yeah, there, there was some, fluffy. they weren't back then. It was like a massive, they were all basically variants of rhinos that were twice the size with like weird shaped horns. And they were like, Rawr. You were telling me the other day that rhinos are quite possibly your favorite animal. They are my favorite animal. Current animal. <laughs> They're going extinct. I have, you know, a long yeah. list of favorites. I would want it to be, I suppose, a dinosaur that is that people won't be tempted to like intensively farm. Right. Well, I guess you know I wouldn't want it to the, like bring them back and be like, uh huh. They're tasty. A, a cow <laughs> replacement. Yeah, 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 they're tasty, isn't it? I also would be very a bit worried about like messing too much with the the delicate ecosystem. Well, like, let's work under the assumption. Yeah. That it won't ruin the ecosystem too much, and cool. it will slot okay. in fairly nicely. Well, one of my favourite dinosaurs is Triceratops, yeah. or indeed anything in the Ceratopsid mm -hmm. uh, family. They are, for me, the complete package. Yeah. Because they are a, a brilliant, awesome, huge mm -hmm. dinosaur. Uh, they're part of the bird-hipped yeah. um, like fa family of dinosaurs, so that's, that's interesting. Yeah. The thing that I think like, draws people to dinosaurs yeah. is that they are like super giant animals and they all seem to have a superpower. Yeah. Like, or at least that's probably just the way that it's sold to kids. Like, yeah. But they're, and they're just really like animals. But, but like <laughs> each dinosaur has a superpower. Yeah. And for me, the way that a Triceratops has like attack horns, yeah. defensive frill. Although it's possible <laughs> the frill was just used for mating displays or temperature regulation. But <laughs> when you're learning about dinosaurs as a kid, it's like defensive frill, attack horns. You know that to me has always seemed particularly awesome. Mm -hmm. So. Triceratops, I think. Oh. Or iguana dot. No, triceratops. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, there, there's another question I've got here that's. Triceratops, like, I, you could ride one. As right. Well. That's a consideration. True. You could ride one. You could tame one. You could be your best friend. You couldn't live in the house. You could do the thing, like in Jurassic Park, when he leans on it. He yeah. Back. Just up and down <laughs> on its warm blooded belly. <laughs> that's right, I said it. Warm blooded. <laughs> it's not controversial anymore. <laughs> Okay, next next question. I had saved it for later, but seeing as you answered the extinction question with a uh, dinosaur that you liked, oh, I'm okay. taking that the Triceratops is your favourite dinosaur. 
What an assumption to make, Ellen. Oh, uh, okay. A Triceratops is in my top three. <laughs> um, I'll tell you one of my favorite dinosaurs, actually, right. is uh, Archaeopteryx. It's not a very exciting dinosaur. Is that an archaeologist? but with like... Yeah, <laughs> it's a fossilized archaeologist. Yeah. It's like a little raptor Indiana Jones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, there you go. Oh. Uh, if you look at, we'll, we can put it on, on screen, but the, no, the Archaeopteryx so fossil yeah. uh, is one of the most famous and significant fossils in paleontological history. There it is, it's classic. Oh, wow. Absolute stone cold classic, literally stone, stone cold, cold classic. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it really establishes the link between dinosaurs and birds. Mm -hmm. I just think it's cool. It's it's like a little raptory, feathery bird thing. I think if I was going to have a dinosaur as a pet, I'd go for Archaeopteryx because it's small enough right. that it could live in the house. I like Iguanodon because it's got um, the Fonzie hands. <laughs> <laughs> It's also one of the first, it was like the first, that's an important dinosaur as well, because it's yeah. like the first dinosaur, I think, to be classified. It's the one that like, in all the old drawings, it's like this ridiculous like hippo blob that's just like, because like, because they used to, they used to think that dinosaurs were like this on the floor, like a big, like a stupid hippo with a horn that was like, well, have a picture in it, this will make sense. And we're like, Bleh. and then as the learning and the science improved, we were like, oh, okay, actually it was like a, a kind of, Question. Yeah. Is, what's your favourite dinosaur? Which dinosaur is Fonzie? Yep. <laughs> Could you please do an impression of it? Oh, right, okay. Oh, man. Yeah, all right. I'll go with Ar Archaeopteryx then. Yeah. So you have to imagine yeah. that my arms are covered in feathers. Feathers. Luxurious feathers, like this. And it would, you'd be sort of like neck out, like this, tail up. <laughs> use your imagination. Or don't use your imagination. You don't have to imagine me with a tail. It's not what you want to do. And yeah, I'd just be bobbing around looking for bugs. <laughs> <laughs> like I usually no am. Change from usual, yeah. <laughs> sort of twitchy, I think. Bird like. <laughs> hey. Iguanodon, in all the books I had as a kid, it was always using those thumbs to like shank dinosaurs. It was like. I you were going to say, hit your right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Going my way. So, hey. Luke, got a situation for you. Oh no, you iguana, don't. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Keep going. Got a situation for me. Yeah. Luke, you're alone on the island. In you are you're on, on, on an island. An island yeah, so cool. You're alone on the island with the last dodo on the server <laughs> and no <laughs> plant life. The last dodo on the server. Faced with the prospect of going hungry, do you A, starve or B, kill the dodo? Was dodo meat supposed to be actually that delicious? I'm not saying that would necessarily factor in. Well, I don't know whether it's delicious or not. But it's... I'm going to starve, aren't I? So You're it doesn't. You're going to starve. I'm not looking for like a gourmet meal no. here, am I? Dodo are quite close to like pigeons, so probably Okay. Mm. Do they taste good? Pigeons they could taste quite nice. Probably taste probably game, taste yeah. right. uh, If it's the last dodo, then it's still the end of all dodos. Yeah. So it's probably lonely. So <laughs> make friends with it. Eat okay. it. Right. Well, the actual answer is oh, there's no. another island just over there. Oh, so you just what? It. Or you can kill the pterodactyl flying above the island. Oh! You have multiple choices, Luke. I didn't realise I got Ellen. You got Ellen. <laughs> even. It's been so long. Even, <laughs> even in the sci-fi feature. <laughs> you get Ellen. It's just me and the dodo <laughs> getting Ellen on an island. The Ellen, really have Ellen all Island. Choice. Ellen. Ellen. At the Elland. What kind of life would it be if I'd eaten the last dodo? Delicious. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd die like a week later. Yeah. Anyway, right, final question. Okay. Luke, Ark has you playing as a person that has to look after their hunger, body temperature, and <clears throat> bodily functions. I.e., you have to make your character poop. Oh, you can poop. Oh, why? You, you defecated. Oh, look at that. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Right by the fire. However, your character will also just poop at random, making it very awkward in social situations. Yeah. Right, where did it land? Oh, you pooped while running again. Well, it's good that I'm light for the fight. <laughs> I'll be lighter on my feet. Luke. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is your nightmare social situation? Oh, uh, what is my nightmare? I mean, like just pooping at random is a pretty <laughs> nightmarish social situation. 
I mean, you couldn't relax even if you were pretty sure it wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> oh, nightmare social situation, that's a good question. It's massive like you turn away from dinosaurs. <laughs> so I'm just getting out of the dinosaur headspace. Yeah. Fondly waving goodbye. I'll be back to see you, dinosaur headspace, later. Oh, um, I get quite anxious about yeah. when I'm late to things or when I'm running late to things. I think I'm probably like average punctuality. Yeah. Like I'm often a little bit late, but I'm yeah. rarely like very late. But if you're yeah. going around someone's house or something, or if you're meeting someone, yeah. oh God, especially if you're meeting them at like a like a restaurant or yeah. something or like where you're gonna do something that's kind of time sensitive. Yeah. If I'm running late or if I, if I think I'm going to be late, that is pretty end of times. For yeah. Me. Like in my own head, I'm like, this is it. This is it. I'm gonna get there. They'll have gone. There'll just be a note saying, Luke, you're a bad friend. Buy a clock. <laughs> but the thing is, we grew up as oldies. We grew up in a time. All right, old where... fashioned. During the 90s, if you met up with someone, mm. you had to be there. People didn't have mobile phones. I mean, mostly my mum was driving me there, so <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a problem, to be honest. But, no, but, but like, I know what you mean, I know what you like mean. Like in yeah. family yeah. situations, yeah. Like, You couldn't text and say, I'm running a bit late. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mobile phones are amazing, because you can just be like, I'm really sorry. I'm not I'm coming after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like, the trains are being rubbish or whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm also someone, I hate the idea of being late. I hate being late. And, and it's weird because like, when I meet people and they're late, it doesn't really bother me No, it doesn't much. bother me at all. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just stand in for an extra like 10 I'm minutes. Like, I've got great. a phone, I'll look at Twitter. I'll Get some know. podcasts. Yeah. Get done. Disappear you know. into my mind palace and yeah. ride the Triceratops. <laughs> Pretty big mind palace you got there for a triceratops. Yeah, it's got to be big. There's a special <laughs> antechamber. It's so that's why I can't do maths or anything because oh, I had to knock yeah, through. Yeah, knock through. A few I had to knock through the, the maths in. and social decorum atriums <laughs> to house more dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good answer. I think we've learned a lot about arc survival and all. We sure have. <laughs> We sure have. At least, at least we've learned a lot about how much Luke really loves dinosaurs. So it's yeah, if you, if you ever bump best. into him, just asking him, ask him about ships and dinosaurs, and you sort, you don't have to partake in the conversation. Word just of advice: Don't ask me. <laughs> not if you've got anything else on that day. Yeah, not if you're running late. Yeah, not if you're running. Yeah. Not even late. I am the late maker. <laughs> you're just on your way out the house, and I'm like, hi. Did you know pteranodons aren't technically a dinosaur? They're pterosaurs. <laughs> I think it's time, before Luke goes on and on about dinosaurs forever, to see what you guys have been saying in, in the, the comments. comments. On last week's show, Luke challenged me to an overcooked culinary quiz, which I think everyone can agree I aced with a 10 out of 10 chocolate mug cake. Love that noise. <laughs> okay. Well, it smells like egg. <laughs> Commenter Mr. Martin Bunny spies a business opportunity, Ellen, saying, So when is the spin-off cooking channel outside Eggstra gonna debut? Well, when the Egg Council responds to my sponsorship propositions... Not gonna happen, Ellen. But I've got so many slogans, like, Eggs, they're not quite circles, or Eggs, don't think too hard about what they are. Meanwhile... On that same show, Andy and I took in the sights of lovely Paris and played Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, sampling gameplay modes including co-op and... Shut up, Luke, because Film NFX has important information. Speaking of rabbits, I feel you should know that in Canada, a group of rabbits is called a fluffle. That's amazing. I can actually feel my brain swelling with knowledge. Really? That may be a lasting side effect of the mug cake. Elsewhere on the channel, we let back into the spectacular kingdoms of Amala for another round of adventures with Orca the Fateless One. <laughs> Commenter Boomtoll thinks your love of the game could become a problem, Melon. I make a habit about naming my pets after games. So far, I have one cat called Zelda and one called Altair. I'm thinking of naming my new puppy Amalur, but my brother pointed out that if I do, there's a very high chance of Ellen breaking into my house and stealing her. Boomtoll, you have nothing to worry about. I mean, how would I even make it to your area in the 45 minute window that your house is unattended every single day? <laughs> I mean, looking at this satellite imagery, it seems to show some sort of chain link fence. So uh, no, I'd never do that. Right. Elsewhere, this week, you and Mike rattled through 11 of the coolest looking games that are coming out this August. I think the problem they've got with Saints Row is that they painted themselves into a corner by 
making it increasingly ludicrous. Yeah. So by the final sort of Saints Row game, it's all set in the Matrix. You've yeah. got superpowers. It's it's Space become so and... yeah, it's become so overblown that really there's nowhere else they can go with it. So I can see why they've taken a break. Uh, Agents of Mayhem is fun. It's got a very kind of Saturday morning cartoon yeah. sort of vibe to it. Mayhem. I should have known. Prodigy Gamer doesn't think it's fair that the Agents of Mayhem are having all the fun, Luke. If they're making Agents of Mayhem, then when is Luke going to make Agents of Flamingo? You better copyright that scene before someone else does. A Flamingo's game? What would that even be about? Like, a job gone wrong sees the Flamingos officially disbanded, scattered to the four corners of the Earth, forced to live under the radar until a blast from the past pulls them all back together for one last stop. No authority, no resources, no fear. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Finally, Luke, you took a long, hard look at Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, and decided that the upcoming spin-off doesn't need Nathan Drake. The Lost Legacy could be the starting point for a whole new generation of full-length Uncharted games, perhaps continuing Chloe's story or Nadine's, or starring someone we've not met yet. Although it's never been tested, we reckon the core of an Uncharted game isn't Nathan Drake in particular, but the sense of high adventure his games conveyed. Bounty Hunter broadly agrees with our conclusions. They don't need him, but it would be nice to get prank calls from him every now and then during the gameplay. I don't know, it... oh, sorry. Hello? You're using a prepaid phone? It... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really sick of these calls. I'm on a contract, I'm absolutely fine. Wait, wait, Nate, is this you? Yeah, hello. Uh, you called it all right. Damn it. Who was that? No one. Do you think maybe you made a mistake giving Nathan Drake your number? <laughs> we don't make mistakes. The worst part though is that instead of giving his toilet bowl a dash of citrus fresh bleach, zig <laughs> The worst part though is that instead of giving his toilet bowl a dash of citrus flesh This is it, this is the hill I die on, James. I always knew it would be talking about jigsaw from the store series. I know. Hush sorry. Hush Luke, that's not the <laughs> No. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, oh, hang on, sorry, hang sorry. on. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Right. Certainly there'll be no need to create bizarre DLC in which Washington... Certainly there'll be no need to create bizarre BL... BLT. <laughs> <laughs> Next week's feature. <laughs> BLT should have been in the main game. <laughs> so we've come to the end Yay! of show of the week. No, don't cheer. The end. It's what? supposed to sad. <laughs> do a sad noise. <laughs> Let's just start again. We've come to the end of show of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, Thank watching. You for watching, guys. There's and, lots uh, more shows yeah, we can to watch. Um, should we go talk in unison again? We can. We can try. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this, then you know, like and subscribe and all the rest. We're so professional. We're so you professional. should totally it's watch us every single week. Definitely. And, uh, check out all the other mm -hmm. videos that we put out this week. Uh, lots of cool let's plays and things for you to enjoy and check out our friends over at like Xbox as well um, But yeah, uh, in the meantime In the meantime, um, I'm going to explain to you, Ellen uh, the main theories around whether T-Rex was a scavenger or an active predator Oh, okay. will, will it help with my um, egg stuff? Absolutely not, but you're going to learn an awful lot about T-Rex <laughs>